I don't know about you, but I have been on a traveler's notebook personalization kick lately. I just want to personalize my traveler's notebook a lot more to make it feel like an extension of myself because it is a notebook that I'm carrying with myself on my person, on my body, like all the time. It's always in my backpack or in my work bag, wherever I may be, I usually have a traveler's notebook with me. So I might as well personalize it to my needs. So I have been DIYing and changing my traveler's notebook setup for a few weeks actually. And I think I've come to a conclusion with a setup that works for me. So I wanted to talk about the different mods that I've been making to my setup to make it as useful as possible for myself. The first modification that I wanted to create was actually an integrated pen loop that was sewn into an aspect of my traveler's notebook because I've always struggled with this one thing with the traveler's notebook system and it's the pen clip because the pen clip always seems to want to fall off or be removed when you're removing a pen from your traveler's notebook system and it always drove me nuts. I'll show you a little clip of what happens when I try to remove my pen all the time. You want to take this pen out, you have to hold it down and it's just not fun. I Isn't it so annoying? And it happens all the time. It's honestly a first world problem, but I feel like if I can get over or remedy that problem, I think I'll be using the pen that I bring with me a lot more. And I also wanted a way to use my fountain pens when I am using my traveler's notebook. So I decided to look through recent videos that I've seen that have something similar or have similar uh, systems. And I remember watching a video from Courtney of Little Raven Inc. She was talking about her stationary favorites and she talked about this pen loop that she added to her pencil board. She actually just glued it down with some really strong glue and that was a good solution for her. I also saw Patrick Ng's amazing posts. He's basically the stationary king uh, and he's actually a buyer for Log On. He's the stationary buyer for Log On in Hong Kong. And when you look at his Instagram, you notice that his traveler's notebooks are extremely modified and very integrated into like, I don't know, a certain aesthetic. And you can tell that he uses all of them and it's used for productivity. So I really enjoy how that looks and how functional they look. So um, I looked through his feed and he definitely does have an integrated pen loop in his. And then I also remember that I met a friend in Korea. Her name is Jessica. Uh, her handle is Arctic Freeze on Instagram. And she has this amazing kind of jacket. <laughs> is that what you could call it? A, a jacket for her traveler's notebook that has an integrated pen loop as well as other pockets inside. I honestly don't know how to make this because it's a little bit more advanced, but I wanted to take inspiration from it because it seemed like a really cool modular system that added some more functionality to her traveler's notebook. So to get started with creating an integrated pen loop in your traveler's notebook insert, you'll need a few things. I needed some scrap leather and I actually just used some leather from a passport cover that I DIY'd in a class in Korea. I did it actually with some coworkers and we hated the end product because the company that we took the class from ended up stamping it and embossing it with a whole bunch of these stamps and patterns we didn't authorize, which is not very cool, but I wanted to reuse this leather and I think it might be nice to integrate something from my travels into my Midori Traveler's notebook. I also needed an awl, a needle, some wax thread, scissors, and I used a wrench because I was having a hard time pulling my needle through the leather because all of my supplies that I'm using are actually just book binding supplies and not leather working supplies. So if you don't have like proper leather working tools, that's fine too. I don't have any leather working tools and I just made do with everything that I had and it turned out semi all right. For step two, I conditioned my leather with mink oil just because I wanted to make sure that the leather was as supple as I could get it before I poked a whole bunch of holes on it. And then I also cut it to the proper size so that it can accommodate many different pens. But specifically for my case, I wanted it to fit a fountain pen. Step three is a little bit questionable, but I actually just made some holes using my awl in the leather so that those holes will make it a little bit easier to pull the needle through the leather and the plastic sheet that I'm actually adhering this pen loop to. And this part could have been a little bit more organized. I actually didn't 
use a ruler or anything to create the holes or to make sure the holes all lined up on a straight line. I'm sure you can do that, but I was just eager to get going and it ended up creating a very handmade feel at the end, which is nice. But I think if you want a very clean look, I would definitely measure and make sure you have a guide or a line that you are poking these holes through. Step four, we are actually gonna start sewing our pen loop onto your desired surface in your traveler's notebook. So I actually chose my clear leather folder because it is something that I can move through different traveler's notebooks and it's sturdy enough that I think it can support the weight of a leather loop as well as the pen that's gonna be inside it. So I just actually used some clips these are just bulldog clips and various paper clips i know i should have used some contact cement or something more sturdy to keep this leather piece on there but i had no contact cement and i didn't have any sturdy enough glue to do that so i actually just used a whole bunch of clips to keep it in place just for the first few stitches and then i let go once i realized that the little stitches were strong enough to hold the leather piece in place Okay, this step is the part that I really encourage you to do your research in terms of saddle stitching uh, leather goods because I actually didn't use a saddle stitch method, but that's a way of sewing leather where you have uh, your cord or your thread and you have two needles that you are working with so that you are actually creating stitches on both sides of the leather. I didn't do this because I was having such a hard time just working with one needle and thread so I actually just did it a very very slow method of just creating a running stitch forward like in one direction and then using that same thread and going back the other direction so there were no gaps in stitches but i highly recommend using a saddle stitch method because you will have stitches on both sides of your leather item and it'll be a little bit faster as well but i was just struggling because i didn't have the proper tools to create this so i just macgyvered my way there if you plan on sewing your pen loop with just one needle and thread just like i did i would create a running stitch down one direction like i showed you earlier and then i would just continue that running stitch back by going the opposite direction back to where you started so i actually didn't cut any thread here and it's all one continuous long piece of thread which is nice because it makes it sturdy and you don't have to create multiple knots so that's what i ended up doing and it actually turned out pretty all right. I actually ended up just using a wrench and took it slowly and it was pretty secure. Uh, to finish things off, I actually just use a lighter and I just put a little bit of fire or some heat underneath the knot that I created so that I can melt the wax on the wax thread to really, really keep that knot in place. The last step is just to add your new insert with your pen loop back into your traveler's notebook and voila, you have an integrated pen loop in your traveler's notebook system that can accommodate various pen sizes just like fountain pens. The next modification is actually not specifically related to the traveler's notebook, but an accessory that a lot of traveler's notebook users have, and that's the wonderful brass pen from Traveler's Company. I really love the aesthetic of these pens, but I'm not the biggest fan of ballpoint pens and ballpoint ink. I think there is a time and place for ballpoint pens, especially when you need to write on a receipt or something. But for the most part, I use these brass pens when I'm at work or when I'm at school. So I might as well just uh, modify them so they have my ink of choice. And lately I've been enjoying the Pilot Friction uh, pens for my gel pens because I like to make changes to my schedule and I like to erase things a lot, especially when I'm at work because uh, things shift a lot when teaching. So I decided to do some internet sleuthing to see if anyone has done this before and I found out that Tokyo Pen Station on YouTube actually does a similar thing with their brass pens and they were able to put a uni style fit insert as well as a coletto insert into a brass pen uh, i think the main takeaway from their video and through my experience is that you have to actually cut down your pen insert to fit into your brass pen i think for the most part those three pen inserts that i mentioned fit but there are various degrees of how um, thick 
your pen insert might be so you might have to check um, i would just open up your brass pen just to see um, the actual size of the insert but i actually just had to cut mine down it's actually pretty similar uh, width or diameter and then the biggest worry is actually making sure that you seal your pen once you cut it down to size i actually used a pilot friction pen insert that had less ink than um, a new insert because uh, the inserts are much longer so I cut it down to size and then I just sealed it with washi tape just in case so that that pen ink won't come leaking out of uh, the pen from the back side and it actually has been working pretty well I ended up using this for most of um, my time at school just because I like using um, my friction pens when I'm at work and it turned out all right um, I would also recommend making sure that you have the right spring uh, to make sure that the pen uh, stays in place. There is a spring that comes with your brass pen, but I actually swapped my spring for my uh, friction insert because the spring on the brass pen is slightly too small to uh, fit my friction insert. So I just opened up another cheap ballpoint pen to steal the spring and that worked a lot better. The last Traveler's Notebook modification that I wanted to show you today is actually how to use gold foiling in your Traveler's Notebook to jazz up and personalize your notebook. So I am using this wonderful foil quill from We Are Memory Keepers that I received for my birthday last year. And this is actually my first time trying it out. It is actually pretty straightforward. It's just a hot stamping tool if you think about it. And you just use regular gold foil and use heat and pressure to transfer that gold foil onto your desired surface. So I tried it on some paper and it turned out fantastic. And I did multiple tests across different materials. I just used different inserts to try it out and it worked on regular paper. It also worked on the cover paper. It also worked on vellum. And I think it's just a really fun way to add a personal touch and make your traveler's notebook inserts a little bit fancier. I honestly think you can get the same look if you used a gold gel pen, but there's just something about this embossing tool that makes it look really premium because you can kind of see the indent of the gold foil in whatever insert here putting that gold foil onto. So I added some onto the front cover of my notebooks and I also had the privilege of using some gold foil with this beautiful insert. This is actually a Travel Tools limited edition insert for Traveler's Company. And this is my stream journal and I think this looks fantastic because there's already gold foiling on this insert and I wanted to match that gold foiling and just label it with a simple text that says uh, stream journal. I also wanted to try it on vellum and this is probably the most exciting part. It looked fantastic and it actually worked. So you can use this gold foiling tool on vellum. So if you have a vellum dashboard or an insert with multiple vellum pages, you can jazz up your journal pages with some gold foiling. And this probably looks the most professional because it looks like it's seamlessly printed on there or embossed on there. And then I took the boldest step. I didn't film this because I was too nervous while actually doing it, but I actually embossed the back of my traveler's notebook with gold foil. I just scripted my name and honestly, it's not the nicest foiling job, but it actually works. Uh, I would say if you're gonna do some customizations um, on your actual leather cover that you practice a lot first and you also apply even pressure. If you are going to do some gold foiling on your traveler's notebook, I would make sure to do some tests on other leather products first and also to apply less pressure than you would on when you're gold foiling paper because the leather is a little bit softer and you might get a thicker line like mine looks. But overall, I love how it turned out. I don't think it's going to be as permanent as actual hot stamped gold foil on leather, but you get the same effect and I think it's just a fun novelty and a fun way to personalize your traveler's notebook. Okay, we've made it to the end of our three modifications. Please let me know if you try any of these modifications on your Traveler's Notebook uh, by using the hashtag Job's Journal on social media so I can see what you are up to and I can see your wonderful creations. And be sure to check me out on the different social media sites. They're all down below. And I'll see you on Twitch because I do regular weekly live streams there. Okay, see you on Monday for the next video. Bye, everyone. Bye.